In the beginning of all life forms lies the stem cell, the unprogrammed first cell that has the tremendous potential to grow into all cells. The stem cells we study here at the Technion are called pluripotent. That means they can differentiate into virtually every single specialized cell type of the body. Liver cells, uh, insulin producing cells, neurons, heart cells which actually beat and can restore cardiac function, musculoskeletal cells, bone, tendon, and that's just the beginning. In 1998, world science and medicine exploded with new promise when Technion scientist Professor Joseph Itzkovich Eldor and his colleagues announced the isolation and cultivation of the first human embryonic stem cells. With this breakthrough, future cures for intractable diseases ranging from cancer, heart disease and diabetes to Parkinson's and spinal cord injury became closer than ever. Today, Technion is recognized as a unique global center for stem cell research teaching scientists across the globe to cultivate stem cell lines for the benefit of all mankind. Professor Lior Gepstein of the Rappaport Faculty of Medicine and his team made international headlines when their stem cell research created dramatic new promise for sufferers of heart disease. The problem is that adult heart tissue cannot regenerate and therefore any significant heart cell loss such as occurs, for example, during a heart attack, is irreversible and may lead to development of progressive heart failure, which is a huge clinical problem. Possible alternative solution is to try to replace the damaged tissue with new heart cells. Our work using embryonic stem cells allowed for the first time to generate in the lab heart cells that have the molecular, functional, and structural properties of heart tissue. Dr. Shulamit Levenberg was listed by Scientific American as one of the world's top 50 technology leaders for 2006. She extends the revolutionary heart research to human blood vessels. We took embryonic stem cells and we mixed these cells with endothelial cells that know how to form blood vessels. And what we got is really a piece of cardiac tissue under the microscope after one day or two days already you can see the beating. So we get a tiny piece of a tissue that is really a beating tissue and has having vessels inside. We hope that transplantation of this tissue will improve the blood supplies of this area and therefore result in superior engraftment and survival of the engineered muscle. Stem cell research also promises to find new methods to cure cancer. Professor Karl Skoretsky, a world expert on molecular genetics and biology. We take human stem cells and then grow them into human tissues and then inject or instill cancer cells into these uh, embryonic stem cell derived human tissues. That way we can study the interaction between the cancer cells and the human microenvironment. And we can test anti-cancer drugs in a way which we think is more predictive than currently available experimental models. We are concentrating on the developing of platform technologies that are extremely unique. In this framework of research, what we are doing is uh, deriving, making new cell lines, learn how to culture them in completely defined condition that will allow the use of the cells uh, in the clinic in the near future. Even if it's 10 years from now, before we'll have cardiac cells or beta cells to treat patients, it's going to be a major achievement in the history of medicine. This laboratory that became world expert in growing stem cells is even providing courses for NIH in order to teach investigators in the US how to treat stem cells, how to keep them alive, and how to make them divide over and over again. If one looks at the world's scientific literature in stem cell research, we can see that the Technion scientists have among the most publications in the highest standard journals, science, uh, stem cells, and many other journals, Technion scientists and labs are sought by collaborators from leading universities around the world, MIT, Harvard, the West Coast of the United States, Europe, Asia. There are numerous grants from leading granting agencies, such as the National Institute of Health, the European Commission. So the Technion really is at the epicenter globally in this area of research. The Technion also has been a pioneer 
in the societal and ethical aspects of stem cell research. The Technion and its scientists, in conjunction with leading ethicists, religious leaders, have convened a number of forums and international meetings which have really led the world in setting the standards for ethical consideration in stem cell research. The ability to do this kind of research involves tremendous need for support. And in fact, the Stem Cell Center here at the Faculty of Medicine and our partnership with the other faculties of the Technion have enjoyed tremendous support from our friends overseas. The American Technion Society in particular has really set this as a priority and has come forward with the resources needed to do this kind of research for the benefit of humankind. Today, the Technion is one of only 10 institutions worldwide that is eligible for NIH funding from the U.S. government. With each stem cell advance, with the support and vision of the American Technion Society and friends around the world, the Technion's achievements are enabling scientists to make new discoveries, initiating collaborations, teaching new generations of researchers, and bringing revolutionary opportunities to scientists across the disciplines. Technion continues to make the impossible possible.